Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Greyboard Gamer here with an unboxing of a recent Kickstarter arrival, The Faceless. Before we take this sleeve off that's covering up the box underneath, let's take a moment to check out the art here. I backed this a while ago, so I don't remember anything about it, and I haven't gone back onto my Kickstarter page since this arrived to see what it's about. Definitely conveys creepiness with these big-headed children down here, and whatever kind of creature is looming over them here in the forest. With that said, let's get this off and take a look at the box. This appears to be the same picture that's on the sleeve, except, of course, it's in full color with a lot more detail. I think I remember now, now that I'm seeing the compass here, that this game had something to do with magnets, and the magnets in the miniatures move the compass needle, and somehow that dictates the direction of movement. I can't remember exactly, but let's find out by opening the box. Let's see if I can get this lid off. There we go. And that is some interesting looking stuff, but let's take a look inside the cover of the box. The inside of the lid has some really great full color art inside. Our kids are looking over these sleeping, creepy bunny things, and I'm sure this scene would make a lot more sense if I knew the story behind it and actually played the game. Let's get back to the contents of the box. And I am not sure what these are. They look like they might glow in the dark because this is the cover of the box. I don't know if there's any way for me to hold this to where we can see it better. Like this is some kind of decal that goes over top of the box, maybe? I don't know. I don't want to mess with it too much and ruin it. But that's what I would think, especially when I'm seeing... Let me see if I can... We look up here near the top. It has the icons that tells you how many players and how long it takes to play. So I'll have to look into it a little bit further to understand. And there's a whole other pack in here. Maybe these are just overlays. I don't know if they're permanent stickers or not. But that kind of looks like it would go over top of the board here. And speaking of the board, is this single-sided? Nope, it's a double-sided board. Nice thick cardboard. That's going to be sturdy. We have our punch boards here. Same thick cardboard. We have our little rabbit dudes, some pointy teeth mouths, some eyeballs there in the upper right. And here, well, I hope that's not a, a misprint or a mistake. It looks like the exact... Okay, maybe that's what these decals here are. Ah, trying to grab it. I can see the little symbols like the bunny guys and everything are on here. Maybe you place those on these white ones. Let me turn out the lights real quick and see if these actually glow in the dark. These are definitely glow in the dark. I turned off my main lights. I don't know how well this will show up on the camera. And the answer is no, my camera does not work well enough at low light to be able to see that with all the lights off, but they all are glow in the dark. So that would make sense why I have blank tokens that match the punch board exactly as the one here. Looks like we have another portion of the game board here with something stuck to it on the underside. It is the warning on magnet usage. And on the opposite side, we can see the correct assembly of magnets. Okay, let me open this board up so we can take a look at it. It's a very large rectangular board. And I'm guessing this portion will go somewhere like that during the gameplay. This looks like a lot of the tokens, areas for cards. This is a very 
thick and sturdy game board. There's something on the other side, but it has nothing to do with gameplay. It looks like it's just the name of the game with some really nice artwork on the back side. Inside we have a composition book. It says Ethan Green 1993. I guess that gives us a time frame for when the game takes place. I don't know if what's in here are spoilers or not, so I'm just flipping through it real quick to make sure that none of us are able to read it. Here we have what looks like a poster. It's a very large poster with the victims of the billy goat, which looks to be backer names. Let me see if I can find mine on here. There I am. I found my name. Let's continue diving in here. I don't know. Yeah, that is not in English, so that's not going to help me very much. That doesn't appear to be in English either. Aha! Wow, looks like all of the rule books are in here for different languages. I'm guessing that means it was cheaper to print all these language copies, which seems counterintuitive, but maybe it was cheaper just to print them and include them all than it was to try and do the logistics for getting the version that people wanted and making sure that they sent them the right rule book in the right box. While that seems a bit excessive, for someone like me who has a lot of friends that visit from other countries and I take games with me on trips when I do leave the U.S., it'd be nice to go over the rules with somebody and be able to hand them a book that's in the language they understand better than English, which is their second language, or maybe even their third or fourth language to give them a book in their native language would be nice. Let's take a look. We have our sufficiently creepy cover. And this is a full color glossy rule book. So we'll have to dive into the game and actually play it to know if this is well structured or well written. It's definitely shiny and pretty. And it appears to have a lot of visual examples which is really nice when you're trying to learn a game. A deck of cards. We'll take a look at those in a minute. We have a sand timer filled with, looks like blood red sand. We have a custom die with etched and painted symbols on it. what looks like bases to snap onto the minis. We have looks like the little small bunny guys here. I'll just show you one. They're all the same sculpt. We have our little creepy bunny dudes. Continue into the box. A couple of no, little plastic pieces. Don't know what they're for. We have our compass. Imagine that goes there. Here are our magnets, and those are quite strong. Those are not easy to pull apart, so I can see how they don't want little kids messing with them. They could pinch a small finger. We have 5644. Oh, 5644 faceless are watching you. I'm guessing that's the number of backers for the game. couple of cloth bags, some metal coins. Let's take a look at those. These are quite heavy. They got a lot of weight to them. And it looks like, yeah, they do have different symbols on them. Again, not knowing the game, I'm not sure what they represent. There's Elm Street. book. What's that? Looks like a Walkman with some headphones. I guess those were still in in 93, but these are really sturdy. And you can probably hear them clanging against each other. They feel to be comparable in weight to 
a similar stack of quarters, about that same feeling, same weight. Let's take a quick look at the cards, and then we'll take a look at the minis. Looks like the cards have five different backs to them. We have our, looks like our characters here. I don't think there's any spoilers in taking a look at these. And they have that linen finish to them. They slide really easy. And they, they feel like a pretty solid stock also. We have the Billy Goat cards. Oh, making my eyes hurt looking at it. Our little bunny guys. I think they called them servants when I was flipping through the rule book. It looks like it gives a direction of movement. These appear to have street signs, and we saw Elm Street on the coin. It's like a lot of dead ends, but the symbols are different on them. And our largest stack appears to be the one with the compass rose on it. Oh, and there's different colors here, so maybe that's some kind of character deck. Not quite sure, but the artwork is really nice. You really get a feeling for that creepy 1990s vibe it looks like it's going for. We have four minis. Let's take a look at each one. And these appear to be some really nice, well-done minis. Looks like we have one of the characters on the side of each one, and then on the back side we have the creepy faceless. I think that's what they're supposed to be called. Looks like the girl's either being sucked into, yeah, she looks like she's being pulled into the mirror by these hands. And then we have that really creepy Cheshire cat looking girl on the other side. Looks like she's emerging from it instead of being pulled in. But even the frame of the mirror looks like it has detail on it. We got our little boy in front of the chalkboard. You can see the little hands reaching around it here. Looks like it says read. Little schoolboy in his book. On the other side, instead of <laughs> read, they crossed out the R and put D on that first one for dead. We got our little donkey dunce who's ripping his book up. Really cute and creepy minis. And then we have the big guy here, the billy goat, with his bag on his back. Don't know what those are. I can't really tell through my camera lens. It looks like a bunch of little balls, but I'm sure it's something more sinister than that. Probably makes sense in the context of the game. But he looks like he's just kind of a, a, emerging from the ground. This part of it. Before I put him away, I looked at those balls really close and I couldn't see anything but little balls. So I imagine it has something to do with something that he steals or it steals in the context of the game. I mean, on the back of the box here, we see a little, or on the inside of the lid, there's a, a little beach ball. But I don't think it's a bag of beach balls. And I've been burnt before, so let me take a look under the insert and make sure I didn't miss out on anything. I didn't find any more materials for the game in there, but there's this inscription. If I disappear one day, you'll find me down here. Find my memories. Help me to escape from the dusk world before Billy Goat turns me into another of his faceless. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of the faceless. It's been a long time since I've done an unboxing, and I want to get back into doing it because I have so many games on my shelf that I have not opened yet. I figure if I'm going to open them and take a look at them, I might as well film it too. 
even if it's an older game. This one recently arrived, but I might still do unboxings for some of my older games. That way, if it's something you were on the fence of buying and you wanted to know what the components look like inside, at least you'll have that video to give you a little bit more reference to help you make your decision as to whether or not you want to purchase a game. For past unboxings, I have put the minis on a little rotating table so you could see all the way around. For this one, I just decided to hold them. So for future videos, if you rather see me hold them like I did here and just move them around and talk about them, or if you would rather I put them on the turntable and you can just see them 360 without me holding them. I can do some comments over top of that. I now know how to do that, so that won't be an issue. It won't just be music playing in the background like my old videos. I can actually do voiceover now. I have a, a microphone and figured out how to use my program to do that, so I can still talk about the minis if I go that route. If you have this game and you've played it, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Let me know if there's any other games in my collection you'd like to see unboxed. You can follow me, Greyboard Gamer, over on BGG, and I have a complete updated list that shows all the games that I do own. I have kept it up to date for these past couple of months, so it's completely current. And you might hear Mr. Kit Kat in the background. He wants me to come outside and play with him. So, duty calls. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being the world's most awesome fans, and I'll see you in my next video.